Hi there, my name is Megan, and welcome to today's edition of the Learn to Monetize More video series. We are going to help you gain some valuable insights in planning your DFP campaign ad inventory in this video. Why are we doing this? The reason is simple but powerful. Campaigns give life and direction to your optimization efforts within DFP. In the first several videos, we began with teaching you the fundamental units that comprise the DFP interface. In our most recent lesson, we took a high-level view of the user interface to explore its many features. This time, we are going to teach you a useful way to plan your ad inventory. So, put on your A-game and let's turn you into a DFP mastermind. We start our planning by determining on which section of our site we'll want to place our ads. Similar to Google AdSense or Google AdX ad units, our Google Publisher tags are merely placeholders in which creatives will load. The biggest difference in serving your ads through DFP is that any number of ad networks can load their ads in this placeholder. Which ad networks and how many is entirely up to you. You'll also want to put some thought into creating placements. Placements are a means of packaging groups of ad units based on targeting criteria in a manner which is appealing for advertisers to purchase. Savvy advertisers will want to narrow down their reach, and by defining specific targeting criteria your ad inventory, advertisers may value it more highly. Key values are a mechanism which allow you to more specifically target your line items. This is a somewhat advanced feature, and though we won't discuss key values at length in this video, it can be a very useful mechanism to learn. Key values can be defined as anything you please, from DFP-defined values like gender or custom key values that you create yourself. So, prior to creating your ad units, think about how you want to structure your inventory. It's important to structure this properly from the beginning, as changing the structure retroactively can make things messy. One tip we suggest you to consider is to incorporate the name of your content into the name of your ad units. For our example site, we have eight sections, a broad news section comprised of world, local, and national sections, and a broad sports section comprised of basketball, football, and boxing sections. If you want your ad units to be granular, you may want to create separate ad units for each section and incorporate the names of those sections into the ad units. In order to analyze performance, it's important you create separate ad units for each position on your site. You may have several ad positions for 300 by 250 ad units, perhaps one will go above the fold and one below the fold. It's best you create separate ad units for each. Continuing with our example, we're going to run three ad units per page, a 300 by 250 top unit, a 728 by 90 bottom unit, and a 300 by 600 side unit. Since we have eight sections, that means we need to create 24 overall units. If your site is too big and achieving this level of granularity would be too overwhelming, you may want to simply stick with creating one set of ad units not specific to sections. Creating too many ad units can make ad optimization unwieldy and complicated. Fortunately, we can also use our key values to organize our inventory and help us to analyze reporting. Again, this is a subject we'll broach in a separate video. Now it's time to create our ad units. Making sure we're logged into DFP, let's navigate toward our inventory tab. Next, let's click new ad unit and in the code field, we'll input the name of the ad unit. The name of our first unit is news 300 by 250 top. This automatically populates in the name field. The following description field is optional. We'll then need to specify our ad size in the size field. In the target window field, choosing underscore top opens the creative into the current browser window, while choosing underscore blank opens the creative in a different browser window. If you've created any placements, you can choose to incorporate the ad unit within the placements field. We then recommend you choose override for the AdSense inventory settings. We then arrive at Maximize Revenue of Unsold and Remnant Inventory with AdSense, which we recommend you untick. This creates fairer competition if your DFP setup includes other third-party ad networks. You now have the option to choose Add Unit Frequency Cap, though we don't suggest altering this field since it's best practice to regulate frequency capping at the line item level. 
we then come across refresh rate, which is mostly relevant for mobile apps. This can be especially useful for mobile apps such as games, where users remain on the same screen for long periods of time. By refreshing the screen periodically, you'll likely increase ad revenues. Lastly, we click Save and of course repeat the same process for our other ad units. The last step is to generate our GPT tags. When doing so, we'll have a choice between asynchronous tags and synchronous tags. The former allows for better page load speed as these tags enable content to load separately from ad creatives. Synchronous tags, on the other hand, are recommended for expendables and interstitials. These tags load at the same time as a page's content, which may be detrimental to user experience. Nonetheless, we have often seen better revenues from synchronous tags, even though intuitively they seem like the inferior choice. We encourage you to experiment with both types if you're unsure. Performance varies from site to site. Note, you cannot mix and match synchronous and asynchronous tags on the same page within a site, though you can vary them from page to page. Lastly, we recommend you leave the Enable Single Request box unchecked, as this means the tag will call all the ads on the page at once, rather than separately. Choosing Single Request has been known to cause reporting discrepancies. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Also, learn to monetize more by watching our tutorial series and reading our latest ad optimization tips. Please subscribe to our blog to receive periodic updates. Thanks, we'll catch you next time.